let us take a look at linear programming in some detail so linear programming is one of the oldest studied optimization problems it has its history in aircraft scheduling that was done at the time of world war 2 and since then it has been used a lot in a myriad of different areas so for example expenditure planning and logistics supply chain e-commerce so all of these industries frequently use linear programming further financial planning portfolio optimization are two more examples where linear programming is heavily used let us take a look at a simple example which will allow us to appreciate how linear programming arises in all these applications so let's consider a case so let's say that there are certain warehouses so these squares denote warehouses and there are certain outlets so these circles denote outlets so let us index the warehouses by i and the outlets by j so material flows from the warehouses to the outlets each warehouse may send to some of the outlets but not necessarily all of the outlets and let's say that cij is the per unit cost per unit cost of transport from warehouse i to outlet j right so this could be for example the distance on the road that a truck has to cover and therefore there is a per unit cost associated with that distance because if the distance is large then the per unit cost of transport would be large then let's say that xij denotes the quantity that is supplied from i to j right so from warehouse i to outlet j the quantity that is supplied is denoted by xij let dj denote the demand at outlet j so each outlet has a certain demand some outlets are in probably busy areas and therefore have a lot of demand and likewise some outlets have lower demand so let dj denote the demand of a particular object at outlet j then si denote the availability at warehouse i so let si denote the availability at warehouse i so we have listed all our notation si is the availability dj is the demand xij is the quantity supplied from i to j and cij is the per unit cost of transport if there is a company that holds the warehouses and outlets it would be interested in minimizing the total cost that it has to spend on the transportation right so for that company the objective function of interest would be minimum over all xij so it will schedule its quantities such that it minimizes summation over i from 1 to let's say w is the total number of warehouses and j which are neighbors of i so ni denotes the outlets that can receive or that are connected to warehouse i so ni is the set of outlets that are connected to warehouse i and i am summing over all j that belong to this set ni right so ni is a set uh, for instance in this case outlet 1 is connected to warehouse 1 so in this case the ni contains only single entry so the objective function becomes summation of cij times xij so this is the total cost that the company is incurring because i am multiplying per unit cost with the total amount that is being shipped and therefore this is the total cost and the goal is to find xij such that this total cost is minimized 
at the same time what are the constraints on xij first of all you can imagine that xij is a quantity that is shift so it has to be non negative it cannot be negative which would not make sense practically further we have to have that i must supply as much quantity as there is demand so i could say that i am summing k over nj so nj is the set of warehouses that are neighbors of the outlet j okay so x kj should be greater than equal to j dj which is the so this is the demand at outlet j the total quantity total quantity shipped to outlet j is given by this so the total quantity that we are shipping to outlet j from any of the warehouses k should be greater than equal to the demand so at least i should satisfy the demand and i could ship more i don't care but i do have to satisfy the demand and conversely i can only supply as much as i have so therefore i should say that summation over j in ni xij should be less than equal to si so in this case this is the supply at warehouse i and on this side we have the total quantity shipped out of warehouse i to all these outlets which are connected to warehouse i right so we have these three constraints and these are the three constraints that have to be imposed and i need to minimize my problem which is the total cost that is incurred subject to these three constraints so as you can see here now that this is a very logical formulation of the problem our goal is to minimize the cost such that the quantities that are being shipped to various outlets is non negative and each outlet gets to satisfy its demand well whereas each warehouse can only supply as much as it has so this is an example of a linear program and similar linear programs arise in all sorts of areas which involve logistics or planning or uh, e-commerce and so on so having discussed uh, linear programming it is important to discuss about its history a little bit the oldest algorithm that has been used for linear programming is the so called simplex algorithm so this is simplex algorithm and it basically requires you to express the whole problem as minimize c transpose y h y equal to d and y greater than equal to 0 so the simplex algorithm solves a linear program of this form by the way can every linear program be expressed in this form so what if i have a linear program of this form c transpose x g x less than equal to h and a x equal to b right so suppose that i have a linear program of this form then can i always get an equivalent linear program of this form so i would request you to pause and try to get a linear program of this form the key to convert this conversion is to realize that on this side we have only non negative variables while on this side we have variables which could be positive or negative so what does that mean we need to convert first into a form that will make the variables positive or negative there are two tricks that can be used for this conversion first is the slack variable trick which we have already seen so we can say that gx plus s is equal to h and we can say that s is greater than equal to 0 so then at least by introduction of slack variables all the constraints become equality constraints then what else there is one more thing remaining that here all the variables are greater than equal to 0 while on the left hand side we have x 
which could be positive or negative. To make convert it into a problem which has all non-negative variables, what we could do is we could write x equal to u minus v, where u and v are greater than or equal to zero. So in general, any number can be expressed as difference of two positive numbers. So any non-zero number can be expressed as difference of two positive numbers. This choice is not unique by the way. This choice of u and v is not unique. But this is one of the choices that you can make. And if you use this choice, you will actually end up with a problem of this form. And given u and v, you can always get back the x. So with this you can see that we are able to convert a problem which is of this general form into a problem which is of this form. And this is the form that was traditionally considered by simplex algorithm. Today in MATLAB you can for example specify this form itself or in Python you can directly specify this form and it will do all these conversions by itself in the software and actually call the simplex algorithm in this form. But if you go about implementing your own simplex algorithm you would realize that you actually have to convert every problem into this form and then apply the simplex algorithm.